Liz Crosby with another yoga flow. So excited to start with root chakra, muladhara, root system, element earth, physical body. This is going to be a chakra series, so we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. It moves from gross to subtle in the elemental aspect, and I am going to recommend a blanket, a block, and a strap. All very, very crucial for imprinting the unseen actions, which will help us to ground down and set a firm foundation, which is what root chakra is all about. So I'm going to delve deeply into this chakra throughout the practice, but really, really quickly, my two cents on chakras, just to give you the 101. A chakra is a wheel, or more accurately, a toroidal flow. So most people aren't familiar with what a torus or toroidal flow is. I like to joke, it's like a donut. So donut metaphysics, to be really simplistic, the type of donut with the donut hole missing. <laughs> so this is actually where we get the sign for the torus with the two, uh, uh, they look like the horns, so most people think it's the horns of the bowl, but it's actually the ends of the fountainhead of energy flowing, billowing out through crown chakra, seen from a 2D perspective. So uh, the chakras are also both masculine and feminine, and it is important to balance the masculine and feminine polarities throughout the chakra system. This is how we're able to harness the kundalini energy up the spine and you can always create more strength and more flexibility, but always finding the balance, which is crucial. We have a super full moon coming up in Libra pretty soon here, really to reaffirm how important it is to maintain that balance, that symmetry. And again, I, I, I don't like to talk about the word tantric, but it doesn't just peter out in the lower most chakras. It shouldn't, so hopefully you're doing this work. Anyways, you're able to pull that energy up and it feels amazing. So each of the chakras, it has their own unique attributes and they all are interconnected. And so again, at least a simplistic, basic, fundamental understanding of the chakra system is almost necessary to be able to move Kundalini energy, which is what my channel is all about. Right, I really want everyone on a global basis, the whole planetary grid to get our kundalini popping. So here we go, let's get started. Come forward into tabletop pose. All right, grounding down through the palms and the shins. Inhale as you melt the heart forward and up, so don't reach your gaze up. Exhale around the spine, gazing evil. Inhale as you pull the chest forward and up. And exhale as you round. Take it into your bear pose, hip circles, shoulder circles. Whatever feels good in the spine. And then roll the front of the mat up. Take the blanket forward and in front of the roll. So right away, most people when they think of root chakra, they think of their foundation, which wouldn't be wrong. But in order to ground down through your foundation, you actually have to connect to solar plexus or power center. So let's turn on our solar plexus a little bit here. Hands on blanket, slide the blanket forward. And then slide the blanket back. Slide forward. Slide back. Oh yeah. Clean the floor. Now if you don't have a blanket, you can get creative. You can use clothing or an actual blanket. If you're working on a rug floor, plates, or I found out one of my yogis was using a, a baking sheet, a pan. So whatever is frictionless, this is clutch. All right, that's how you get those washboard abs, washing the floor. <laughs> okay, walk it forward for a puppy dog, melt the heart rate, so this is all the torque feeling. Breathe into a thoracic slime. And any part of the body that's connecting to the floor can be considered the foundation. So it, in essence, becomes our rooting point. Again, you want to send energy straight down to root and rebound energy back up into your posture, which is a standing still way of energy. The more energy you send down, the more energy you receive, because our relationship with Mother Earth is perfectly reciprocal. Slide it back. Child's pose. Hips to heels, we'll slide forward for your thighs. 
On va se faire un mat. And roll the spine up through the seated. Tuck your toes. Take seat on top of your heels. Manually tuck those pinky toes. So this is called Madrasana, broken toe pose. It'll open up the arches of your feet for what's called Padamanda, but you'll want to visualize like a suction cup. And the Padamanda is able to pull energy up through the feet so that we can then again share that energy with our whole being, with our whole posture, right? Root chakra is our right to hold space. So the more we're able to root down through our foundation, the more energy we're able to pull up and the more we're able to kind of blow up into more space. So you start to become really obsessed with how you can set energy down and receive the energy back up again. All right, and walk the hands forward, untuck the toes, gentle drum, pick the neck. Push away by the heels. And why not? Fingers just point towards your knees, lean your way back, slowly peel the heels of the hands up off of your mat. Fingertips will lift very last. And walk the hands back, lift your knees up, switching out the bridges of the feet. Maybe lift up on top of those two knuckles. Beautiful. Slow so lower it back down again. Walk the hands forward, back in the tabletop, tuck toes, hips lift up and back. Downward facing dogs. Walk it out, bending one knee and the other. Allow the hips to shift side to side, breathing the calves, hamstrings, lower back. And then walk the hands back to the feet. Arrive in a forward fold at the back of the mat. Allow for a little bend in the knees, grab off the elbows, shake the head yes, shake the head no. And releasing the hands down, inhale as you peel the chest forward, find some like arch or spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Ground down, lift up, hold arms, sweep up, Uttita Asana. Exhale, hands back and we're at center. All right, so we're going to imprint some unseen actions. Walk it back, pick up the back of the mat, roll up the mat a couple times. Blanket comes back behind. Yes, we're going to imprint our core. Again, solar plexus root chakra connection. Block comes between your thighs. I prefer lengthwise so that it doesn't hit the floor when I slide back into the plank and lower the chaturanga. So block comes between the thighs. Now you want to squeeze the block in such a way that there are spiraling formations forming through the legs so that it's almost like the block wants to eject out this way, right? Is it Alan Watts? Says everything is just a series of spirals. <laughs> now sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge the hips leave apart. Remember, adduction, keep squeezing everything in towards midline. Inhale as you peel chest forward, find like arch. Plant down through your palms and slide the blanket back. Keep squeezing that block. Now shift the weight of your shoulders forward beyond the wrists. Exhale, lower through Chaturanga, hug the elbows in. Flip one foot at a time. Inhale into your earth and we're going to roll those shoulders back. Puff chest, broad across the collarbones. And exhale, keep squeezing the block. Slide the blanket up behind the wrists. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find some length, arch your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Brown down, lift up, hold arms, sweep up. Exhale, hands back to the heart center. All right, it's a little bit of housekeeping, but it's worth it to imprint these energy locks, unseen actions. So we did adduction with the block. Now take your strap. We're gonna do A, B, duction. So you can think of these, each of these swirling vortexual toroidal flows as like little tiny galaxies or universes. And what happens? It goes big bang. But there's also some theories that it retracts and it implodes back in on itself eventually over time too. So we're, we're happening all right now. It's all happening right now. So we're imploding, we're exploding at the same time. Of course, we can only imprint exploding and imploding individually. That's why we have a linear time frame to put our karmas in. So put your strap around your thighs and press out against the strap. Oh yeah, your, your postures are going to be super charged after this. Get excited. Inhale, sweep the hands out. Now. Exhale, hands your hips through the heart, swan down into yourself. Inhale, push this forward, find the arch. 
Plant down through the palms, slide, leg it back. Keep pressing out against the strap. Slowly lower through Chaturanga. Now this time, flip the opposite foot first. Inhale into your Urdhva Mukha. Roll the shoulders back. Notice how the abduction will pull energy up through the legs. Deliver that energy directly into the heart space. Exhale, slide. Bring it up behind the wrists. Keep pressing out against the strap. Inhale, pull to forward. Finally, arch. And exhale, forward fold. Ground down, lift up, both arms, sweep up. And exhale, hands back and heart center. Whew. All right, release the strap. We did an A with both strap and block. So now we have our adduction and our abduction imprinted in our large muscle groups of the legs. Now we're going to actually separate the legs with a Surya Naskar B. But keep the abduction and the adduction engaging even as the legs move separate individually from each other. Chair pose, Uttanasana. Bend in both knees. Both arms sweep. Exhale. Release. Straighten through both legs. Inhale. Pull chest forward. Find Plant down through palms, slide, like it back. Exhale, lower through chaturanga. Inhale, then alternate opposite foot flips first. Inhale, urva. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana. Pause in your downward facing dog pose. Oh, yes. Now plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. Float the right foot off of the blanket. Right leg extends up and back as you inhale. Exhale, lean to nose, come forward into your plank pose. You can tent the hands, help the foot through if you need to. Right foot plants between the palms. Now scissor the thighs together. Activate the bond. Inhale, rise. Both arms sweep up. Now we're going to stay here for a second and really imprint this Mulabanda activation. So easy to forget about when you're just doing asana on a sticky mat. The sticky mat does such a good job. A couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. Exhale, the hands come to the mat. And this is for my regular slide the blanket in. Right foot onto the blanket. Hands plant. No fingers in line, thumbs in line. Yes, eventually the hands become the foundational point, right? Two hips, one line, keep it neutral. Kick the blanket towards your wrists. And take it up, hands standards. Then push the floor away. Plug the femur head bone into the hip socket as you hop. Left leg is straight up, anchoring into your central axis. Now, draw the right leg to meet the left leg at the top. Squeeze the legs together at the top. One, streamlined energy conduction. Slowly lower, butt back, feet forward. Figure seven. Feet to blanket, slide back. Vinyasa. Opposite foot flips first. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, down dog. Down dizzle. Adha Mukha. All right. Plug the left femur head bone into the left hip socket. We'll go over this a little bit more in full later. Left leg extends up and back. One leg extended and down dog. Exhale, lean to nose. Round and upper spine. Gently step left between the palms. Help it through if you need to. Tend the hands if you need to. Inhale, rise. High crescent. It can be a shortened stance. Find that mula bandha activation. Deep ujjayi breaths. So the sense associated with root chakra is smell, which is the closest tie to memory, right? Really important. Claire olfactory already starting to hold new space maybe. Pay attention to the smell as the breath receives and extrapolates information. All right. Hands come down to the mat. Woo! Feeling grounded yet? Slide the blanket in. Left foot steps onto the blanket. So funny. <laughs> when you're a kid, you don't want to get grounded, but when you get older, you want to get grounded. <laughs> so right leg extends. Again, keep the hips neutral so it's easier to find your stability, right? Hip stacking over shoulders, stacking over wrists. Push the floor away, arms stay straight. Kick the blanket towards your wrists. Find your warrior three stance. Initially, right leg is anchoring in 
and then draw that left leg up. So this is also a part of the yantra in root chakra, is there's a downward pointing triangle. So visualize that downward pointing triangle, just shoot the energy straight down and receive it straight back up again. Now, hips back, feet come forward. Gently set down, slide back. Exhale, with your Shantaranga. Foot opposite foot first. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Roll those shoulders back. All right, slide the blanket up behind your wrists. Inhale, peel chest forward, front leg, march spine. And exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, round out, bending both knees. Both arms sweep and press up, stand up, hands through heart center. Whew, all right. Slide the blanket off to the side. Roll your mat back out again. And speaking of triangles, meet me in a wide legged stance. Now seal the outer edges of the feet down with the inner arches up. Hands to hips, inhale as you find length of the spine. Exhale to hinge from the hips and lead with the heart. Forward fold it. Enjoy. All right, we're gonna do a few things here to carve out some space for the breath. Already we've got some heat generated from just a couple sun salutations. Walk the hands over to your right foot. Lengthen the spine. Now the colorful, breathe into your lower back. And then over to the left. Even here, can you scissor the thighs together? So you're isometrically pulling the energy up. If you didn't have a sticky mat, it's almost like your feet would slide together. Back over through center. Walk the hands forward. Right hand plants underneath your face. Left arm sweeps up, twist it open. Gaze is at the left fingertips. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Left hand can reach back for the right thigh for your half bind. Right hand can catch the left ankle, twist it deeper. Bringing the spine out of toxins. And again, of course, root chakra is heavily associated with gravity. And we're reorienting the body in space so that gravity can deliver oxygenated blood flow throughout the body in space. Gently release, switch. Left hand plants, sweep right arm up, twist the spine open, gaze is at the right fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths. Right hand can reach back for the left thigh. Left hand can catch right ankle, twist it deeper. And the breath is delivered through the physical body. This is why third limb of yoga is asana and not say uh, golf or scuba diving, right? It's actually embodying with our physical body in space, sacred geometric form. Gently release, back through center. Walk the hands forward and melt the heart, it extends up towards the ceiling. Now this time, walk your hands over to the right foot, bend deeply into the right knee, straight through your left leg, Skandasana. Right arm sweeps forward and in front of the right shin, left arm can extend up, internally rotate, bend at the elbows, reach back with fingertips or wrist. So as the breath navigates into space in your body, feel the breath extracting information. It's almost like it picks up these little particles of matter that you can then smell and process with your internal senses. Gently release, left hand catches your right shin. Now, nuzzle your left shoulder up against your left knee. Sweep the right arm up and over. Side body stretch. And our job as yogis is to make the body a fit vehicle for the spirit. Right, again, our right to hold space. We get really expansive with our physical expression. Gently release, rise it back up, and then switch over to the left. Maybe hands stay lifted, optional. 
Straighten through the right leg, left arm sweeps forward and in front of the left shin. And be cautious with that one again. That one is a lot of move on engagement. Maybe right arm extends up, inching the rotators back with fingertips or wrists. There is a bind here. Use the energy pouring through the femur bone to roll your left shoulder back. And blossom across the heart space. You can kind of spiral your spine around the energy, which is very straight, that is your femur bone. And then gently release the magic of those binds. Right hand can catch your left shin. Nuzzle your right shoulder up against your right thigh, right knee. Left arm extends up and overhead. Amazing. And then gently release. Back through the center, straighten through both your legs. Inhale as you find length, exhaling the forward fold. There is an option here to take it up, headstanders. If you need to, you can always place a blanket forward in front of you for a soft landing. No hard objects, get them out of the way. Tuck and rolls are not all that bad unless you land on a hard object and they don't feel all that great. So very crown the head to the mat. Again, this is our new foundational point. So pour energy through that foundational point. Receive the energy back up, standing still wave, take it up. Float the feet up, arrive. And here we are in Shoshasana, headstand. Nice work. You can take the legs out wide, maybe practice some seaweed legs. And again, think as you're holding space with your body in space, you're sharing that life force energy, spiritualizing the matter. Gently release the feet back down. And think of the Vitruvian man, right? Take some head circles. We're taking up space in a sphere of our existence. Switch the direction of the circles. This is the basis behind the yantra, right? Light bouncing around in a sphere. Inhale, peel the chest forward, cranks like arch your spine. Hands to hips, rise up, flat back. Core stays engaged. Heels coming towards your legs, those point out, bend deeply into the knees, get low, nod the hips from side to side, and the goddess squat, hands come into the inner thighs, now press the knees apart, drop one shoulder and gaze over the other. Inhale through center, exhale the twist. Inhale through center, exhale the twist, moving from side to side, pause where you feel good stretching sensation, deep ujjayi breaths. Center, straighten through both your legs, hands come to hips, and step back to the front of the mat. Meet the big toes touching, heels slightly apart. Inhale as you sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge from hips to the heart, swan dive into yourself. Inhale as you peel just forward, find length, arch spine. Now step the left foot back, just three to three and a half feet. So the average down with the inner arch up. Lift up onto fingertips, straighten through both your arms around the upper spine. And this might be a little bit easier if you're brand new to this, if you have extra books, books under each hand, or blocks under each, underneath each hand. Plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. See if you can float the right foot off of the mat just an inch. Oh yes. This is Mulabanda activation. It's called descending the femur bone. You actually want to do this with your humerus bones too and your inversions. It's plugging in action. Gently set the right foot back down. All right, here's some extra credit for my expert alchemists. Walk the hands back to frame your left foot. Now straighten through both arms to content the hands. Draw your left heel towards your left seat. See if you can pull the left foot off of the mat. And then gently step back down. And inhale, pull just forward, bend with our spine. Shift weight forward into your right foot. Standing splits. And now I'm going to give you an opportunity, if you want, to take it up into your inversion. 
handstand, optional. You can also just step the left foot to meet the right foot, always an option. Hands plant, middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, push the floor away. Connect the legs together at the top. Again, squeeze the legs together. Reach out for the balls of the feet. Draw the floating ribs together and in. Slowly lower, butt back, feet forward. Maybe there's a toe tap. Inhale as you peel chest forward. Finally, arch. Now step the right foot back, just three, three and a half feet. Heel to heel alignment, start for you to draw a line from your left foot with the intersect the back foot's heel. Lifting up onto the fingertips, straighten through both your arms, round in your upper spine, plug the left femur head bone into the left hip socket, and float left foot off the mat, just an inch. Find that little bond activation. It's okay if it's just an intention today. You may not actually get any cover time, and that's okay. Again, blocks can come underneath the hands. Gently set that left foot down, right? These unseen actions are really, really powerful. Again, you'll be able to send more energy straight down, receive that energy back up, and get more expansive with all of your shapes, all of your asanas. Now, walk your hands back. You can actually almost set your chest on top of your left thigh. Arms straight, put the front of fingertips, tent the hands. Maybe draw your right heel towards your right seat. This one's tricky. And set the right foot back down again. All right. Lean way forward into your left foot. Right leg sweeps up for your standing splits. Draw forehead towards shin, and extend the right heel up towards the ceiling. Breathe into your left hamstrings. And again, this is optional. Feel free to just set the right foot forward to keep the left foot. Hands can plant. Make a straight line with both arms. Straighten out through those elbows. Push the floor away. Plug the femur head bone into the hip socket. If you're hopping again, kick towards yourself. Then root to rebound that energy. Visualize yourself growing roots. An intricate root system. This is the upside down tree pose. Adho Mukha Vrishasana after all. Slowly lower, butt back, feet forward. Find the counterbalance. Maybe toe tap. And set down. Nice work. Inhale, see peel to forward. Find like our spine. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend the knees, both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toe, now lift your heels up. And slowly lower down to toe pose. Knees open wide, reach your arms straight through. And gently take a seat. So we're going to do a little bit of core work to again really, really expound upon this truth that it is the solar plexus root chakra connection. <laughs> the stronger your power center is, the more you're able to send energy straight down to bring the rebound energy back up again. The more space we're able to hold with our physical body, the more life force energy we're able to share. All right, so hands forward and in front of your hips. Straighten the arms, round your upper spine, drawing these high pins towards your chest, maybe straighten through the legs. Inhales to lower, exhales to lift. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift. Once more, inhale, lower, exhale, lift. Feet to mat. Hands come back behind your hips. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Exhale, hips come back behind the wrists, lift one of both feet up. L sit. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Exhale, hips back behind wrists, lift one of both feet up. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Exhale, hips back to the earth. And hands come underneath your thighs. Upright the spine, lean your weight back. Float the feet up. Maybe extend the arms forward, maybe straighten through the legs. All right, here we go. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower, hold. Flutter here for five, four, three, two, and one. Hug your knees and start to take some rocks. So again, we're gonna start really low to the ground. Take this energy up. Bend the right knee, left leg stay straight. Rock up, catch your left foot. Pistol squat. Now don't think about it too much. 
but try, if you can, you can use your hands to help you up if you need to, but try to press up through your pistol squat. We're gonna start with a small surface area to really crank up the heat in that right hip. Left knee, center fingers and thumb, catch left big toe, right hand to right hip. Open left leg out to the left. Maybe throw a tree branch. Back through to center. Reach across, right hand catches outer edge of the left foot. Reach your left hand back, twist. For navelin as you twist. And if the earth element doesn't get there, then how is the breath supposed to get there? Earth element matters. Back through the center. Release the foot, hands to hips to grow branches. I love how Iyengar says it's almost like you're feeling with every single cell so much, it's almost like each cell is like an eyeball. Maybe extend the arms here for five, four, three, two, and one. Sweep it back, but just stand your femur bone. Hover the foot as you reach forward, warrior three. Spiral the inner thigh towards the ceiling. Hands to mat, standing splits. We extend the left heel, breathe into your right hamstrings. Now again, you can just step the left foot back or handstand or take up. Really reorienting the physical body in space so that every part of the physical body gets a nice even conduction, generation of heat. Right foot slowly lowers. Right foot can toe tap right wrists. Left foot steps way back. Steal the outer edge down off the inner arch up. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. You, start, you might start to become a little bit of a perfectionist about alignment too, because you realize that there are these really, really prominent energetic highways that can only really be reached when you become obsessed with these unseen actions. Hands come behind the back, interlace, brown across the legs, you inhale. And exhale the hinge from hips, leave the heart as the right shoulder passes the right knee, then begin to round lengthen the whole spine up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Ground it down to lift up all the spine up, both arms sweep up. Warrior one. Open out warrior two, adjust the stance. So heels arch alignment, hips are external here. Grab that right sit on underneath you, straighten through the back leg, relax the shoulders. Big set of the fingertips and also crown. Almost like you were headstanding, right? We imprinted that John Dermano with headstand. Flip the right palm and reverse it. Left hand, third half. Lengthen through the right side body. Breathe into the right side body. I know Leonardo da Vinci kind of skipped out. <laughs> Just two, two figures. So many shapes we can make with our bodies in space. Inhale, rise. Warrior two, right over right thigh, left arm extends forward. Left hand can reach back to the half bind. Right hand in step, right foot there is a full bind and full bind. Just feel free to take flight. Left foot will step forward. Press up with the root to rise, birth paradise. Straight through standing. And then straighten through lifted. Send in breath, send in ujjayi. Slowly lower back down again, yogis. Pressing down through the right foot. Shift weight forward into crown. Left leg extends back. Bound half moon on your way back. Then step it way back. Release the bind. Rise warrior two. Straight through right leg as you rise. Hilt to left foot and shorten the stance. Deep in right hand. Crease extend right arm forward. Reach. Right hand, ankle, shin, floor. Left arm extends up. And twist the spine open. Gaze at the left fingertips. Deep Ujjayi breaths. That earth element, she delivers. Notice if you can smell the breath, taste the breath. Now, lock and come with if you need. We do have shorter arms and legs, probably because we've spent most of our human history using our legs as locomotion. Or whatever. Wherever the foundation is, that's where energy for power center goes. And of course, destruction breeds recreation. Press up, lift up, reach to rise up, half moon. I wonder if in the future we all have longer arms. <laughs> Bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot, maybe chop off some variation. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. 
Couple more deeper jaw breaths here. And gently release. We extend the left leg, bend the right knee, warrior two, settle in and arrive. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior, lengthen. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Walk the hands to the inside of the right foot. Left heel lifts, left knee lowers. So the mantra, there's a mantra for each of the chakras as well. For root chakra is LAM. L-A-M. Can lower down into the forearms, ease into the hip stretch. When we say that the root of the mantra for root chakra is why, <laughs> it's a, a definite, there's a definite correlation to this. Uh, Sita in the Ramayana is kidnapped and taken to Lanka, right? Sounds like Lam, Lanka. Right hand to right knee, gaze on the right shoulder. Come on to flush apart, left knee, bend left knee. Reach back with the right hand through your left foot, press forward towards seat. It's the disarray of root chakra that causes these attachments to Maya or the holographic projected reality and therefore ensnares our Kundalini energy associated with Shakti and Sita. Gently release. Now walk the right foot off of the mat. Roll up the front of the mat. Blanket comes forward and in front. So I wanted to clarify because sometimes the Tamas Gunas root chakra and sacral chakra, earth and, and water, get a really bad rap, right? <laughs> they're, they're considered to be uh, the um, manifestation of distortion. But it also, if we didn't know what our work was, then how would we be able to actively participate in it? All right, so hands can come to blocks, or if you can, <laughs> no hands, but this is, this is super strong Mulabanda activation. Slide the blanket forward. And slide the blanket back. So we want to create strength where we create flexibility. A couple more times. Woo! All right, slide it as far forward as feels comfortable. Tune in with your breath. Let the breath indicate how far is far enough to go. And then walk the hands over to the left. You can also do this from half splits and then uh, emulate or do a demo from your Ara Hanuman. Walk the hands over to the left. Left foot points back behind, right foot sails down to a 45. So here's from your half. Now more so from your full. Actually, it took a second for me to catch on to this transition, so I still have to kind of lift up a little bit here. My, my own personal some scars that I've got to weed out. They also say again that there are these seeds, right? The seeds of our attachments to Maya. When you're first born, they haven't had a chance to germinate yet. So as you get older, then they begin to germinate and they cause these distortions with the Kundalini deviations from the central axis. Back to center. And then slide the blanket back in again. All right. Blanket off to the side, roll the mat back out again, half pigeon pose. Right foot behind left wrist, release the right foot behind the right wrist, gaze back at the left leg, in line with the hip, inhale, sweep fine length, exhale, forward fold. A couple more deep Ujjayi breaths here. Enjoy the opening. It's really these deep yin postures when you really start to get comfortable in these shapes that you really start to see the big change, the rearrangement of these tamas munas, the more primal elements. I want to talk to you a little bit about why we say you are not your body in yoga. So all of the elements are varying densities of light and the light is reminiscent of our thought forms. And so again, like I was saying before, the elements move from gross to subtle. And so the grosser you go, the more dense you go. 
And those are the thought forms you've been thinking on repeat for a really, really long time. So even though you are not your body, the body keeps a perfect record, absolutely accurate inventory of all the thoughts that you are or have been thinking. And some of them are even super deep down in your subconscious. And you might start to resurface some of them here in these deeper postures like half pigeon. So just notice what comes up with loving appreciation. And again, this is why we cannot negate the earth element in this process. This is why we cannot negate the asana in this alchemical process. So we, we trick our minds into liking it, right? And you take it piecemeal, you take it bit by bit, remember you're infinite. There's no rush to doing the whole Tandava dance. You don't have to do the whole flower of life in one session. So we just kind of slowly chisel away. And just like the ocean waves against the shoreline can change the whole landscape of the coastline over time, your diligent practice, when you come in day in and day out, you will see transformation take place, right? The mutable aspect of ourselves, uh, like the uh, earth element, Virgo is mutable. So we can see change happen, but it takes discipline. It takes our, our, our constant practice and devotion. But again, knowing this stuff, the yana yoga, yoga of the thinking, uh, can give us this impetus, this uh, motivation to follow through with some of these philosophical principles. Start to walk the hands back in. Tuck the back toes, engage the left thigh, lift the left knee up, slide the right leg to the left and set the right hip down. Now walk hands over to the right, left forearm lowers and gently twist. Now don't always bust this out, but since it's a root chakra flow, take your block. Coming back through center, place the block, medium steady. And you want to place the block at a diagonal and just gently lean into the block. This will really unlock the psoas muscle that connects your leg to your trunk, which again is very much associated with survival. We carry a lot of deep primal fears here, so just notice what comes up with loving appreciation. We give it back to Mother Earth who graciously accepts. Amazing. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, start to lift it back up again. Nice. Good. Walk off to the side. Hands plant up in front of your right hip. Press up. Lift up for a variation of length. By the way, I lifted that one up from a Virgo yoga instructor. Check out Rocky Herring. He's amazing. Left foot swings down. Left arm extends forward. On the try the pose. Roll that left shoulder back. Maybe float the right foot up. Left hand catches outer edge. Reach it forward towards one of the room. Release. We bend right knee, left hand plants, sweep right leg up and back, hip circles, ankle circles. Maybe rotate to outer to left, look at light in your right hand. Push the floor away, lift the hips up. Vashi stops so you can lower knee, lower forearm. Right foot can sit back behind, press on the both feet, lift the hips up, wild thing. Vinyasa if it's pleasing. Or skip it, no worries. All right, so an inch at a time, I'm gonna skip mine. Middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, Surya Asta Bandha, sun hands. And you almost kind of want to visualize your hands as like Pada Bandha, sealing the outer edge down and lifting the inner arch up. The inner arch would be your inner triad. Arms stay straight, spiraling, continuous spiraling action again through the arms. Plug the humerus head bones into the shoulder sockets. So again, like I was saying, you start to emulate, replicate everything that's happening with the legs, with the arms. Lift the heels, bend the knees and then pounce. I want you to pounce, and don't worry about coming back. I'll even do a few with you guys. So pounce, maybe go back. Not the end of the world, go back. They're fun. And then maybe, maybe go up. Slowly lower, to a top. Up again, want some extra tapas for your karmas. Back down. 
and set down. Inhale, pulse this forward, finally, large. Exhale, forward fold. Share a pose, bend the knees, both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toes, lift your heels up, then slowly lower it down. Knees open wide, put your arms straight through. And gently take a seat. Now come forward and in front of your hips. Oh yeah, we're doing it all again. Straight through your arms, round up your spine, drawing these high up and in towards your chest. Maybe straighten through those legs, inhale to slowly lower. Solar plexus helps us to ground, exhale to lift. We love it, inhale to slowly lower. Exhale to lift. One more, inhale. And exhale. Feet back to the earth, hands behind your hips. Press up, lift up, reverse, tabletop. Exhale, hips back behind the waist, lift one or both feet up. We're just doing this twice. So notice if you do lift one foot, lift the other one next time. Press up, lift up. <laughs> then exhale, hips back behind the wrists, from navel to our spine, float the feet up. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. And exhale, hips back to the earth. Hopefully this is kind of this awareness of the root chakra and solar plexus connection. Lift up your chest, lean your weight back, float your feet up. Make some arms forward, you straighten through the legs. Is, is kind of training your mind to love core work because now you know how solar plexus helps you to expand into more space. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Lower hold and flutter. Hugging everything in towards midline, but also right abduction, pushing everything out. Your conduit, a channel of energy. Here for three, since I was talking. Two. <laughs> and one. Hug your knees and stars. Take some rocks. All right, let's take that energy and let's carve out some new space. Left knee stays bent. Right leg stays straight. Rock it up. And land on your left foot. Catch the right foot. Pistol squatters, give it your best. Right? Practice the non-attachment. It's okay if you can't lift up, but try. Root your eyes. All right. Right piece on fingers and thumb. Catch the right big toe. Left hand to left hip. Now open right leg out to the right. Maybe draw a tree branch. Gaze over the left shoulder. Visualize that tripod in your foot. Isometrically pull all of the balls of your foot together towards the center of that triangle. Back through the center. Left hand reaches across, catch outer to the near outer to the foot. Reach your right arm back. Push the shin bone back and lift the kneecap up. And then, even though the foot is grounded, can you plug the femur and bone into the hip socket? Seeing the self from every perspective. Back through the center. Release the foot. Hands to the hips and branches. Here for five. Four, three, two, one, sweep it back. Starting to feel like the trivia man yet? Spherical people. Warrior three. Hands to mat. Standing splits. You extend right heel, optional. Hands plant. Little bond check. Arms straight. Push the floor away. Connect. The legs together at the top, you can flex, you can point, you can point. I love the point. Doesn't look all that pretty. There you go, there's a point. Slowly lower. Left foot can toe tap the left wrist. And right foot steps way back. Right foot swings down, 45. Inhale, rise, warrior one, bull arm, sweep up. Hands behind the back, interlace, brown across the pole pose as you inhale. Exhale, hinge your hips. Lead with heart as the shoulder passes the left knee, then begin to wrap. Lengthen the whole spine up and out of the pelvic bowl, breathe into your lower back. Beautiful work. Grounding down to lift up, roll the spine up, both arms sweep up. Warrior one. Open out, warrior two. Again, don't lose that mula bond activation that we did with the blanket. Keep scissoring the thighs together. Flip the left palm, reverse your warrior right hand there, calf. Lengthen through the left side body. Breathe into the left side body. 
Inhale, rise. Left elbow, left thigh, right arm extends forward. Extended side angle. Right hand can reach back to the half lock. There is a full bind. Full binders, feel free to take flight. Right foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, and root to rise. Bird of paradise. Straighten through standing and straighten through lifted. It's okay if you're not carving out this space today. Again, you are infinite. Time doesn't actually exist. It's just a very useful construct within which to recreate ourselves. Slowly lower. Pressing down through left foot. Shift way forward into crown right leg extends back. Bound half moon pose on your way back. Beautiful. And then stepping it way back. Release the bind, rise warrior two straight. Left leg is your eyes. Heel to right foot in short stance. Deep inner left hip crease, extend left or forward reach. Left hand to ankle, shift floor right arm extends. That's why I like to joke. We are literally, most diamonds actually, all diamonds, are just reflecting light. You are shining bright in a crystalline structure, much like a diamond, because the breath is picking up the fire solar plexus and distributing it throughout the cardiovascular system as we hold space with the physical body in space. Gotta love root chakra. All right, gently bend the left knee. Block and come with if you need. Press up, lift up. So here in this formation, Ardha Chandrasana, right hip is stacking on top of left. Toes point towards side there. Push up with the heel. Reach out through crown. Keep emanating energy out through the right foot. Maybe bend the right knee. Reach back with the right hand for the right foot. Amazing. Gently release. Re-extend the right leg back. Work that slow control descent down. Again, when you start to realize these different concepts, constructs, you become obsessed with lighting up your whole field of consciousness. Flip the left palm, reverse it, right hand there, calf, lengthen through your left side leg. Windmill the hands down to the mat. All right, right heel lifts, walk left knee over to the left. Right knee lowers, forearms lower, knees into the hip stretch. Nod the hips side to side. So I have got to mention one more Hindu avatar, and that would be Ganesha, of course. He is the Hindu elephant deity avatar, uh, and he is actually directly related to, associated with, root chakra. Coming onto the fleshy part of the right knee, bend right knee back, left hand to right foot, press heel towards seat. And his name, can be broken up into Gunas and Isha, which are two different philosophical concepts combined together. Gunas are the elements, again, the elements moving up the spine from gross to subtle, and Isha, devotion to all that is, devotion to all the existence. Back into center, walk left foot off of the mat, roll up the front of the mat. Each of us is Ganesha, so don't worship Ganesha as something outside of yourself. Uh, that can have adverse metaphysical side effects. <laughs> so remember that all of these are different uh, symbolism so that we can better integrate these philosophical concepts into our practice. So you are Ganesha. Don't worship Ganesha as something outside of the self. And Ganesha is likened to the obstacle remover because as you rearrange your elements, you're removing these obstacles for Kundalini energy so that it can travel through the central axis. We draw more and more complex sacred geometric form with our bodies in space so that we can clear that one central passageway, right? Bring it in all full circle, pun intended, the donut hole, your Shishuna channel. <laughs> Take it as far forward as feels comfortable. Hmm, all right. Now walking the hands over to the right. Again, you can do this from your half splits. I wish I had started doing this when I was working half splits. Right foot comes back behind, left foot swings down, half middle. Back through the center. Slide it back in. All right. Blank it off to the side, roll the mat back out again. And left foot behind right wrist, squeeze left knee behind left wrist. 
Gaze back at the right leg and line up the hip. Inhale as you find length. And exhale into forward fold it. Ganesha also gets his head lopped off by Shiva. Uh, he doesn't realize that it's his son because Pavatri made him while he was away. And he gets a new head, right? The elephant head, which is the connection. Shiva had temporarily lost connection with Pavatri, and so there, thus the miscommunication. Oops, sorry, I cut off our son's head. <laughs> I love the symbolism. It's so just like in your face and blatantly obvious. So of course, I'm sure you've all heard an elephant, or right? you hear it a mile away. That trunk is really, really loud. So that is the importance of making a sound. You, you want to start to think about all these little tiny platelet pieces of matter that the breath is pulling up. And that's the information that gets put onto the film reel. That is the air element. It picks up that information regarding the old arrangement of the earth element. And then after your work through invocation of the Rajas Gunas, fire and air, which don't worry, we're gonna get to those guys, so excited. <laughs> the air, the air element picks up that old algorithm that was previously the old order construct and then takes it up to third eye for witnessing and processing. So if, you, if you're just you know, not holding any new space, you're not burning away impurities and, and rearranging the earth element, you're not going to get that, that cr crusty platelet matter to fill up the film reel with. You're just going to get blankness, <laughs> nothing. Uh, the earth element really needs to be moved by the Rajas Gunas. It is a passive element. It's something that we work with indirectly, right? You don't just mentally tell your earth element to move around. Willpower is associated with solar plexus, so you have to consciously choose to invert the, invoke the Rajas Gunas, but the interconnectivity is through the alchemical process. So fire releases the water element, which then allows, right, when you do core work, you sweat, presumably, and then the, the water element wets the earth element, making it as clay so you can mold it into new space. I love that. It's kind of like you are your own sculpture and you're constantly sculpting yourself into new space and each of these postures slowly unearthing. And then finally, when you can shape shift and transform yourself, right, the mutable aspect of each and every one of us has, then you can share life force and nurture with new space. And it is then when you're able to pick up the old storyline, witness it, this is crucial, and I'm so stoked for when we get to third eye, because that's where we are finally able to see how these limiting thought forms, right? Because again, Earth is still a manifestation through light, through thought forms on repeat, spin cycle. Then we're able to actually process it, witness it, and release it. So, so often the law of attraction is a really, really popular uh, philosophical idea. And it's become even more popularized through The Secret and Abraham Hicks. I'm telling you that the earth element is what you're calling in. That is your signature. That's what you're sending out. That's what you're receiving back. So again, the earth element cannot be negated in this process. Start to walk my hands back in. That's not to say that law of attraction is, is still very, very powerful. And you should always guard your thoughts. Walk the hands in, tuck the back toes, engage the right back. Lift the right knee up, slide the left leg over to the right, set the left hip down. Walk the hands to the left. Right forearm lowers and gently twist. And what's really fun too is it's like there's this popular book called The Desire Map. As you do expand consciousness and you're able to hold more space with your physical body and space, your desires change. And so they talk about the unknown desires of the heart, right? And air elements associated with the heart chakra. So excited for that chakra. <laughs> I love all the chakras. Walk the hands back to the center. You're going to uncover these desires that you didn't even know you had. It's such a fun journey. All right, now lean into the block. Hello, psoas. Wow. So much good stuff in there. Again, notice as the witness. And sometimes, because we are all interconnected, you might pick up stuff from people around. There's a lot of, right? It's perfect that we're doing root chakra. There's a lot of survival stuff coming up for everyone right now. 
Gently release, release the block, hands plant, press up, lift up, right foot swings down, right arm extends, roll right shoulder back. Maybe the left foot up, right hand catches outer edge, reach it forward towards the front of the room. Gently release, we bend left knee, right hand plant, sweep left leg up and back. Rotate onto outer edge, right foot, get back in your left hand. Roll your hips open to stack. Left foot steps back behind. Press up through both feet, lift the hips up. Wild thing. Back into downward facing. Vinyasa if it's pleasing. Child's pose when you're ready. So again, we will get to third eye, but let your brow rest on the mat, brow chakra. And just download. Transmit all the living thought forms that came up for you through the rearrangement of your Thomas Gunas just now. And just let it unload into Mother Earth. Again, she graciously accepts all of your living thought forms. It doesn't even matter what they are. And only you know this is between you and Mama Gaia. Rolling the spine up through the seated. So this is, I think, one of the biggest misnomers is so often, yes, coccyx, base of the spine, associated with root chakra, but we've been living in an upside down world and I'm sure it feels a lot like your world has been turned upside down in one way or another by the recent happenings. I think, I'm absolutely certain, 100%, that it is because the external environment is applying pressure and almost in kind of a uh, caricature like fashion, trying to remind us to get upside down. And so again, root system is wherever your body is making contact with the floor. So that being said, we're going to use the block and the strap again and try our handstand. So, the upside down tree, according to Yogananda's guru, Sri Yukteswar, we're all upside down trees. So, let's get upside down. Hopefully, that's right side up, right? So, take, we'll start with the abduction. Take the block between the forearms, here and here. And I'm going to do L shape against the wall, but I'll also do handstand in the other room so you can see this energy conduction, and it's an unseen action, right? Here's your adduction, drawing in towards your central line, legs distance away from wall, squeeze the block with your arms, and then walk the feet up the wall, coming into your L shape. Maybe one leg extends up. We are learning how to send these spiraling tendrils of energy. And so again, it should feel very organic. Like you're a tree learning how to grow roots again. And then switch. And we're setting the foundation, so be patient. You don't have to try this in the middle of the room just yet. What's amazing is you grow strength, the confidence, will slowly begin to emerge to eventually take it into the middle of the room. So here we go. Let's do it in the middle of the room, just so you can see. Super fun. It's always a good reminder too. So for my more advanced yogis, this is such a great reminder. You may not be engaging your adductors quite as much. This will definitely imprint them. Okay, so there's the abduction. Abduction. All right. All right. It's not fair. Just the feet and the sit bones get to be root chakra. Come on. <laughs> we want every part of the body to be able to, you know, role play a little bit, if you will. Strap comes around the upper arms. Press out against the strap. Walk the feet up the wall. And don't worry about coming off the wall here. Really using the wall just to grow our strength in all the right places. And you are literally, all of you, creating divine masculine energy here. Switch. 
building strength to support the body in space so that we can deliver the breath, the air element, to every trajectory corner of the universe. And release. There's some people, and I have to agree, that say that the yantras, all the triangles and the yantras, are like really simplistic stick figures, which makes sense. So they, they do say if you get a yantra and you meditate on it, that you can bring yourself into a state of samadhi, sure. But yeah, don't, don't forget to also embody, <laughs> okay? Here we go, middle of the room. Push out against the strap, abduction. Super fun. It will improve, again, your ability to send energy down to root and rebound. So you have a stronger current energy to ride the standing still wave. All right, and then gently release it back down. So we'll get to solar plexus two, which is number three, third chakra. But in this way, by making our upper half of the body the foundation, we're flushing out the nodding and tubular channels with fire. And that being said, let's take it down onto the ground, space first. Hips to ground, walk the elbows forward and slide the right arm underneath the left. Walk the left arm forward and across and over to your right. Both palms facing up. Maybe side right knee, line up the right hip for your half frog pose. And you'll really notice too, as you get more well acquainted with the alchemical process, that if you try to force your body into shapes, that's not ready for yet, your body has a security system, right? The muscles will constrict, which will bar off the oxygenated blood flow, so you cannot go in there and retrieve information that the body has to tell. So back off, it's counterintuitive, but when you back off, the body will unlock and unravel much faster. The body wants to be witnessed. It wants to be appreciated. All of these karmas, these seeds that we're going in and, and retrieving to understand and give a proper witnessing to, really want to be understood. Let's slide the right leg back. Walk left arm back through center. Thread the right arm out from underneath. Left arm underneath right, walk the right arm forward and across and over to your left, both palms facing up. Maybe slide the left knee and lift the left hip for your half bow. And on the contrary, when you do take your time, you let the earth become wet as clay and you remold into just the desired amount of space. Then, of course, the stories come in like a flood. Witnessing with loving appreciation everything that comes up. And then slide the left leg back. And so the autobiography of yogi even starts the very first page. Walk the right arm back through center. Yogananda talks about how the human body has stored within it the whole of our human history. So we're not just clearing on behalf of our own entity and our own past life history. Arms out to a T, gaze over the right hand and line with the right shoulder, left hand underneath left shoulder, bend left knee and roll into your right side body. Left hand pitch back behind for your right fingertips. But that is so beautiful, isn't it? Again, the yana yoga, it compels us to practice when you realize again you are atoning for our whole human history. And there's a lot of gnarly stuff in there. That is so beautiful. I'm like, yes, <laughs> we'll practice today. I'll clear out, even if it's just a little tiny bit, just a little tiny bit in every direction, I'm gonna clear out just a little bit more of that stagnant energy that's been causing us, you know, it's illusory, but pain and suffering throughout our human history. What's fun too is as the third eye starts to activate, you're able to kind of go back in and, and relive all of these, these memories back in the center switch. Left arm extends out, 
Right hand underneath right shoulder, bend right knee, roll onto your left side body. So, so often in our spiritual community, we kind of treat the lower vibrations like they're evil. <laughs> Don't ever feel bad. Be happy all the time. Being super positive to the point where it's saccharine, where it's fake, is actually detrimental to this process. And I hope this practice is helping you start realizing that it is so crucial. Obviously, don't dwell there, right? Don't continue to spin cycle those thought forms, but process them. Give them their due diligence. Back through the center. All right, and then while we're here, hands reach back, catch ankles, press the feet into the hands, slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Gotta get a little, little floor bow. Gently release, and press up, lift up your tabletop. Roll up the front of the mat, knees onto the roll, hands on the hips. Press the hips forward, roll the shoulders back. Maybe one hand to an ankle, followed by the other, Ustrasana, camel pose. Again, feel free to take it to your depth. I gotta start wrapping things up. Only got so much time in each class here. Hands to hips, roll the spine back up. Gently take a seat. Release the front of your roll. Cross the shins and roll over the legs. Draw the right leg in. Right leg comes up and over your left. Lean onto your left seat. Slide the left heel back towards your outer right hip. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, let's elbow out towards the right knee for navel as you twist. Gaze over the right shoulder. Deeper dry breaths. Gently release, counter twist to the left. Back through center, stack the knees, heels towards the outer hips. And inhale as you find length and exhale the forward folding. So just as a parting uh, thought, I absolutely loved surfing. Growing up, I was all I was, I was obsessed, absolutely passionate about it. All day, every day, especially on the weekends, parents would just drop me off at the beach and I would surf my brains out all day long. So I had to definitely transmute my love for surfing into the yoga practice. I hardly ever surf anymore now, actually. It's kind of crazy. Rolling the spine back up, pretty seated. All the teachers would get so mad at me. Come trapping sand into the studio, flare kick the legs. Uh, again, I was a philosophy major in college and I, I studied up on the universal laws and metaphysics, the Kabbalion, hermetic principles, right arm extends. I tell right elbow average of left knee from the able to twist. So I was like, okay, well, I have to somehow transition my passion for surfing into hopefully a passion for yoga. And much to my surprise, it became an even bigger passion, <laughs> this, this yoga enterprise. Gently release and counter twist to the right. So I started to become obsessed with kind of following the breath. And almost like you're, you're tube writing all of these arteries and capillaries of the cardiovascular system with the breath back through the center. And again, also these unseen actions, visualizing like these tube rights, which I used to draw tube rights all the time in school, just you know, idle hands when the teacher wasn't talking about something important, just right away drawing a tube right. Um, so in my head, as I started to practice the Svaraya, self-study, all of a sudden I became obsessed with sending energy from my power center out through all of the extremities, arms, legs, crown, and spiraling vortexual tube right formations, right? And then also, became obsessed with this slow, it was almost kind of like a, an earth wave, I like to call it, an earth wave slowly breaking over time, this transmutation, this mutable aspect of the earth element, slowly unraveling the stories that the body has to tell, and the body only speaks to us with truth, right? They try to light Sita's sari on fire, and they're unable to do it, because she only speaks truth. The body only speaks truth, so if it comes up, it's true. No, no argument there. Start to walk the hands back in. Walk the hands back behind and straighten the legs out in front. Balance the knees, windshield over the feet. Slide the flesh to the one off morning. Inhale, so you sweep the hands out and up. 
and exhale forward fold. And of course, in order for that earth wave to break, you have to properly witness and, and, and understand with a, a, a open ear, right? Inner ears open. Rolling the spine back up through the seated, draw your knees in, soles of feet come together. Knees come wide, sweep the hips towards the heels. Hands on your feet, press elbows into inner thighs. Forward fold it. And then rolling the spine back up through the seated, draw the knees together, engaging your core. Send the arms forward, slowly lower the spine down, one third of time. Hands should be able to graze your ankles. Press up, lift up, roll the spine up. Hands come alongside the ears, pressing down through the palms, drop the elbows in. Press up, lift up onto the crown of the head, first pause. Walk the hands in, press up, lift up the rest of the way up here, full or the dandrasana. Maybe walk the feet together. One leg extends up. And switch. If you have drop backs in your practice, come up to stand. We'll get into that with heart chakra. Number four, coming up in three classes. Hips forward. As you roll the spine back, core stays engaged. Reach back. Connect, tuck the chin, back the head to the mat, slowly release it down. Make sure I put the knees side to side to release in your lower back. Hug your knees in, and right leg hugs in, extend the left leg out. Scoop the hips to the right, draw right knee over to your left. Stacking right hip on top of left hip, roll the right shoulder down to the ground. Deep Ujjayi breath. Back through to center, hug right knee in, hug left knee and extend right leg out. Scoop the hips to the left, draw the left knee over to the right. Stack left hip on top of right hip, roll left shoulder down to the ground, breathe into your left side body. Back through to center, hug right knee in, extend both legs straight up, wrap the elbows in, Pressing down through the upper arms, engage your core. Sweep the legs up and overhead for your shoulder stand. Cow pose. Press chest towards chin, breathe into the back of the neck. Now, shoulder stand means whole body pose. Largely because the whole body is bounced over you, but also because you're connecting the mind to the heart space here. And again, through the cardiovascular system, oxygenated blood flow, moving through the circulatory system, we are able to connect to the whole body and space through the chakra. Again, all of the chakras are interconnected. Really excited to delve deeper into that interconnectivity as we move throughout the week. Hips back, feet forward, a loss in a plow, hands come behind the back, interlace, press palms together, press just towards chin, maybe bend the knees around the ears, try to feel awesome. Just for some weirdness, maybe take a lotus. And you can actually use your hands to tie your lotus here. Maybe hands come to the knees. And straight through the arms. Big cloth key. Oops, sorry. There's <laughs> Urdhva Padmasana. Now gently hug the lotus in towards you. Interlace. Pindasana. Keep the lotus if you have it. Hands come behind. Slow roll the spine down, articulating one vertebra at a time. Hands come underneath your seat. Press up, lift up. Matsyasana. And let the head hang back. Those of you that have it in your practice, you can, if you have your lotus, set the crown down first. Reach up, grab your feet, and pull on the feet. It will accentuate the heart opening here. And gently release. A happy baby pose. Grab outer edges of the feet, rock it out. And then maybe, again, if it's a part of your practice, 
Just a little tiny bit every day. Half lotus or half yoga nijasana, ekapada, shirshasana, the one leg behind the head. Followed by maybe the other leg behind the head. Clasp hands behind the back. Couple more deep breaths here into the lower back. And then release. Extend the legs out, feet flat open, palms face up, close the eyes. Shavasana, final resting pose. And really let yourself surrender completely to gravity. We all come from the earth, each and every cell of your body borrowed from the earth. And of course, one day we will all return to the earth. Shavasana, the dead corpse pose. Let yourself die unto these illusions of separateness manifest from the old arrangement of the Thomas Goodness, the prior arrangements that were creating these limiting thought forms, causing needless, unnecessary pain and suffering. Die unto those. Give them back to Mother Earth who graciously accepts. And feel this divine union between you and Mother Earth, Mama Gaia, 